chasing and yet look how even they are two different chassis manufacturers an american up against a brazilian and, and the brazilian up. goes for the inside look at that stuffs it down the inside runs ricky wide what commitment what a move that's how you make a pass into turn one how do you do it that's 140 mile per hour apex speed that could turn it in listen Earlier brush of the brakes down. Leading the motor race, Pippo Durrani, who was separated from his teammate. Here comes Ricky Taylor. Taylor to the inside. Boy, that's a high-risk area. Or is he just trying to menace Durrani? Yes. If you want to know how good Calvin Fisher's crystal ball is, it's very good. Going to the break, Calvin said the way these two guys are racing each other, the 10 of Renger van der Zander could win. And you saw it in non-stop. Ricky Taylor, Pippo Durrani coming together, entering turn six. So this is into turn six. We have seen it a couple of times. Ricky Taylor had been trying to time the run out. This time he had his best opportunity. Saw the... We'll watch it. Listen, sees that door open, goes for it. Pippo trying to turn down to block that corner edge you, Ricky, at that point. Just like Pippo. It's hard to see where this the car's the going. He's in the middle of the road. And right there. See, Pippo had defended the inside, but that last second thought, okay, I'm good. Tried to just set back up for turn six. At that point, Ricky saw that car width open, was committed. At that point, Pippo turned down. We're adjusted. And the Porsche is definitely looking very strong here at Nürburgring. And that's the gap on the inside. Mikael Amamula takes a look on the inside of Adrian Reed into turn 11. And out onto the home straight. Going to shut the door. And Klaus Backler looks like he's going to try and follow through as well. Aidan Reed just pulling ahead. Down the home straight, now coming back at Mikael Amamula. Mikael Amamula ducks to the sides to try and block him. Can he get round the outside? But here comes Klaus Backler. He's taken the outside line instead, goes very deep into the corner, had everything going to try and stop the car to get it round the corner. Mikael Amamula keeps hold of the position. And Backler and Aidan Reed continue to fight. So it's Backler who's got through. Ah. そうなるとセーフティーカーが出るまではオーバーテイクのチャンスありますけどはい早めにこれスバルは抜かないとオリメイラの前が確定しますしかもレオンも来たあ残念さあセーフティーカーはあるかまだ今表示は見えませんあエ
Down the butcher, down the hill, and that's for the lead. That's Smiley, and through he goes. He goes a little wide, he's off the road and back on. Here comes Cook, here comes Morgan, here comes Sutton. Suddenly Jackson's being attacked from every side. Cook's up to the outside to go second. That's the inside for McLean. Right up behind him is Morgan. Sutton's got nowhere to go. He's stuck behind the Ford, but Chris Smiley in the Hyundai lead, out wide all over the curb. Goes Ollie Jackson. Sutton is on the inside of Adam Morgan. Who gets ahead of whom? Sutton up the curb. Three wide and copy. Racing. Sutton is ahead of the pair of them, so Adam Morgan stays fourth out of all of that. Holly Jackson drops to the back of the queue. So, is he going to be close enough to have a lunge when he gets down the bottom here? Meantime, in this little battle pack, you've got Boston trying to open up a gap down the inside of Mark Winterbottom. There's some vigorous battles going on in this field. Look at this one, side by side through two, three, and then four. This is 200 kilometres an hour. And Frosty stays down the inside. They're still side by side. Fabulous racing. Mostert clings to the position now. He's got the inside for the hairpin. Well done. <laughs> Real high quality, great racing, and professional operators not tipping each other off the racetrack. Rockefeller dispatched for now. But there was more problems ahead because Jamie Green had had a quick stop, a quick turnaround, and he came out now with Muller alongside. Muller determined to get through and not lose any time, sensing a chance to maybe catch Ferdinand Hamsberg. Side by side they went on the run into the final chicane. There was contact, neither giving up the position. Muller still side by side. Green, knowing that the inside line would be with him on the way into the first corner. He's no still in front. Swiss driver absolutely desperate to get through though and he committed himself. おっと、そして今どこもの位置が今シーンがピットに入ってきました。山本直樹がピットに戻ってきた。山本直樹がピットに戻ってくる。そして1コーナーだ。1コーナーだ。1コーナー。2コーナーでオーバーテイク長いこと約30 おかしいですね。車高下がってますね。なんか。これ後ろのディフューザーがずっと路面に吸ってるところを見ると、これ福住選手にも当たってなんか左のリアタイヤがパンクしてます。Yeah, takes the place away from Turkington, but Colin tries to fight back, coming off the chicane. To the inside line, he goes into Allard. Can the BMW get its place back on the tighter, quicker inside line? Yes, 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 it can. Turkington goes through. Yeah, good battle, that is, certainly, and that's going to rage. Uh, Turkington trying to move forward and get some points back. He's lost the championship lead, and he's fighting, fighting, fighting as Kamish goes round the outside, pushes a little wide, but Turkington's on the inside for Seagrave and the exit. So Colin Turkington then gets his ninth place back. He's making progress forward. Senna Proctor now comes up to challenge Kamish. Seeing the drivers standing on your screens, all of these guys are going to be unhappy, bar one of them. And I wonder who it's going to be. Initial speed for a few laps, but then it kind of plateaus in the 23. We've not seen significant drop off yet, but that's not to say it won't happen after 30 laps. Who knows? We will see. Yeah, but that could give the advantage, certainly the shuffle has gone to Cassidy, who's now running in a fifth position, but that will cycle through. I think uh, Yamamoto will be behind Cassidy. 
uh, Yamamoto has just been passed by Nigeri and Oyu. It's yeah. actually, that is cost. Uh, it is Yamamoto. a championship fight now, though, Lee. Look, that's the championship battle going around the outside. This is the battle for the 2020 Super Formula title. Noki Yamamoto on in the white Dokomo car. The Team Impul car up the inside is Hirakawa, and he goes through. Will Yamamoto be able to respond? Those tyres aren't up to temperature. He, this was a ni nice little battle, wasn't it? That is not done yet, though. You're going to see that overtaking boost system deployed. He's gone red on his roll loop. He's running out of overtaking boost. Yamamoto still got it on green. He can still go further. And that, of course, is the uh, former race, le uh, race leader show, Subway. Now, it be interesting because I think we have Nigeri coming down the pit straight here. I think he may still have enough of a gap over Nigeri to keep... Oh, actually, this could be very, very, very close as show Subway gets up to speed. Here comes the, the back top Nigeri. This is for the race lead. As we see the Hirakawa and uh, Yamamoto still battling for a position. Yamamoto's got back past Sam. He's got back past when he goes it off. wide into turn. Boom. Hirakawa goes down the inside, but it's not quite there yet. Yamamoto just has enough of a gap to stay ahead of his team Impul rival. And the two-time Super Formula champion keeps the position. But no, Tomoki Nojiri, it'll be interesting to see if he's actually has got the race lead. As Hirakawa's not giving up, he's going for the position again. Oh, they're not going to give up at any point. They're not going to give up at any point. Yeah, they're never going to give this one up, Lee. That was a great example of the overtaking boost system at work. Now you're seeing it again coming up the inside. Oh, that's a really brave manoeuvre if you're going for a championship. Trying to go around the uh, outside, round the inside, the team Impul car. But Hirakawa nearly loses the rear end going through the final chicane. He's driving himself into a great position. This is the move we didn't see. So this is Naoki Yamamoto using the overtaking boost system to get past Hirakawa. But Hirakawa gets straight back into the toe on Yamamoto. Yamamoto suddenly gets surprises himself with how fast the car's going, outbreaks himself into the first corner, and they come into this brilliant bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. Next up uh, down the road is uh, Albert Legutko. He's some 5.1 seconds behind in sixth place. But this is the battle for second. And here comes Fugel again with Prochik turning up the heat closer than ever. So this time, Prochik really is tucked up under his back bumper. He looks to the inside, into the corner, but that inside is soon going to become an outside under braking. Prochik, can he make it stick on the outside? Locking up slightly. You see the car snaking a little bit of contact between them. Prochik has to settle back in behind again. And there, Prochik once again, moving left, moving right, doing whatever it takes to distract Fugel and find a way past. This time he finds a gap on the inside. Dominic Fugel can't shut the door this time because Prochik is alongside. Fugel has the inside line through the next corner. Can Prochik keep it up there on the outside, heading towards turn nine? And around the outside, how approach it? Can he make it stick? He tries to pinch Fugel off. Fugel getting a couple of wheels onto the curbing. Prochik going very wide. Into turn 10, Prochik has got the position. Fugel going very, very wide, almost lets Patrick Simon through as well. But both Prochik is through, and uh, Simon, in all of that, allows Sandra Saubek through. This is where he's strong. Oh man, he's right on him. This guy's got a block right here on the right side. Now just get on line. It's not a passing zone here, just get yourself. Lined up. Oh, oh Rusko misses it. the corner. He missed it. That's the part where you didn't need to miss it because it's just not a passing zone. Just shows you how hard they are pushing right to the limit. Now, can Cedric put the pressure on AJ? Look at him. He's aggressive with the bumper of that car. He's going to dive in. Contact. More contact. They so come across the racetrack to set up for turn 14. Briscoe is praying for more contact. It's brought him back into the race. AJ's going to have to run low here. Briscoe trying to make it three wide. He's going to outbreak him. He's committed. Hard on the brake. He takes the lead away. Here comes the 16 back on the outside. Oh, he just ran him through the grass. They got centered on the outside of him. That was an incredible move. This race is not over, though. Smoke in the right side there was Briscoe. Amadinger's not happy with that move. 
I can promise More you. contact at the oh. 22. Here comes the nine. Gregson's trying to move up to second. 22 right. may have an issue. 22, a lot of damage to the right front. Yeah, he's working that car back and forth, trying to see if he's got all four tires up. Oh, but 16 gonna, off the track. He's going to take second away. A.J. Allmendinger falls back to third. Now Justin Haley takes that spot away. And this battle rages. The 16, or excuse me, the 98 of Briscoe has now a 10 car length lead coming to the white. Indy, no da zone. Vem pra cima, BK. Quer porque quer. Retomar a sua posição de destaque na largada. Vem por fora. Fecha a porta ali, Colton Herta. Dois jovens pilotos brigando pela liderança. Vem por dentro, Viqueio. Vem por dentro. Por fora, Herta. Dois jovens pilotos. Herta com pneus duros. Viquei com pneus macios. Pneus de banda vermelha para o piloto holandês. Ele vem para cima. Herta vem fechando a porta. Por dentro, Herta. Por fora, VK. É a briga que vale a liderança. Vem por fora agora. Não vai conseguir segurar o Herta. Faz a ultrapassagem. Joseph Newgarden. 384 pontos contra 456. Do pentacampeão Scott Dixon, que busca o seu sexto título. Vem para cima, Herta. Rasga a reta de Indianápolis. Usando o botão do push to pass. Vai colocar por dentro. VK. Herta. Travou tudo. Vem por fora, fiquei por fora, reta por dentro. Vai sair na grama, não, lado a lado. Dois jovens pilotos, vem por dentro. Grande briga de Rinos Viquei com reta, não desiste o piloto americano. Piloto holandês se defendendo, pneus duros, pneus macios para reta. Vem por fora agora reta, vai tentar. Uau, vai dar o X. Grande ultrapassagem, não, ainda não, ainda não. Agora sim. Faz a ultrapassagem, Colton Herta. Michael Self, what's he going to do here? Will he go after him? I made the move to the inside. He said, I need inside position on the West Horseshoe. Try me on the outside if you want. And Self's doing just that. Through the cake, side by side here. Michael Self, will he get position here? Tough way around this one. Can't do it right there. But he is outside in all over the back bumper of that Monster Energy number 18 for Ty Gibbs. Michael Self wants the road course win. He also wants the lead when we approach the halfway point here in just a lap. Setting up in wide and six to exit off the bottom onto the onto the high banks and NASCAR one. Gibbs had a great drive off though. Here we go, side by side on the high banks and Daytona for the lead. He's got it. He's got the run here. But Ty Gibbs always very strong down the back stretch here. I've been watching that car from the Sioux Chief onboard camera for Michael Self. Side by side for the lead on the road course of Daytona. They almost trade paint down the back stretch. Ty got awfully close to the outside safer barrier as well in the back stretch. Now having to roll it down. This is where Ty made the bold move early. He'll still stay by side by side in the bus stop. Van Moffitt slower car. He's going to be a factor in this one as well. Ty used up Self there to get through the bus stop. Michael Self back to the bottom around the high banks. Turns three and four traditionally of the tri-oval at Daytona before heading into turns 13 and 14. You got to woe the car down here big time. Thad Moffitt moves out of the way side by side into the one of the most difficult parts of the race course at Daytona. Ty poured it in there. Can he make the turn? Can Self stay even? They're banging again off the final turn to determine who's going to lead this lap. Great racing to the stripe. Who's going to get it here on lap 14? Will Michael Self lead? Oh, no, it's Ty Gibbs right now, still with the lead here at the halfway point in this race. At or around lap 14, we're on lap 15, so perhaps this is the run to the halfway break, the race break here. We're staying green. Great Michael action off Self. the window. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. Sue Chief, thank you for this onboard camera. Wow, great battle between Ty Gibbs and Michael Self, the young gun and the veteran, 29-year-old Michael Self. He says he feels like an old guy in the Arca Menard series now. Just listen to how technical Michael Self and his driving is. Trouble for Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs goes up in the corner, opens the door. The Red Seas are parted for Michael Self. Side by side here. This is for third in GT Le Mans. Connor Filippi down to the inside of the Moutool. Livery, BMW. Bamba on the attack around the outside. Down into Christensen corner, deep on the brakes. If Bamber can hold the outside, he'll have the inside here. 
But Connor DiFilippi oh. will have the inside into five. That is awesome racing. Bammer's going to try to get a run off the corner here. Get a toe down this back straightaway. Try to make the move into turn seven. The tight hairpin. Who's going to be later on the brakes? Uh, Connor needs to keep that inside lane because uh, Bammer's got a run on him and he's deep on the brakes. Right around the outside. Can he make it stick? No. No, the BMW back in front for the final podium position. Awesome racecraft there by Connor DiFilippi, keeping it clean. Been so easy to get aggressive there and get your elbows out and potentially damage both race cars. And the 912 has already had damage in this race after leading from fourth on the start. And this time, Bamberg gets it done. Great switch back. Wow, that Porsche had some grip with those Michelin tires. Woo. The final weekend of the DTM 2020 season and the top two in the championship sharing the front row of the grid. Rene Ras, the championship leader, off to a good start, but a better start from Nico Muller, who forced his way down the inside into turn one. All the cars were recovered. Then for the IndyCar style restarts, and it was a perfect getaway for Nico Muller, the Swiss moving into the lead of the race. Oh. Returning to the championship after missing the previous weekend at Zolder. Looking back then from the race leader, and with DRS deployed and pushed to pass, Rene Rast got a tremendous run out of the Parabolica to move into the lead of the race with 39 minutes plus three laps still remaining on the clock. But of course, he now would have the disadvantage of no push to pass or DRS as the race leader. So Nico Muller stayed in his trails. Rene Rast pit pitted one lap after one, Nico one, Muller and Jamie, Jamie Green had been Green. in and went away with a good stop. He came out just in front of Nico Muller, but with Muller's tyres up to temperature, he fired it around the outside to move ahead of Rene Rast. Seconds up the road. Well, that happened. Rene Rast reeled him in and then another move on the way out of Parabolica to gain the lead of the race back. Rene Rast into the lead with nine minutes and three laps remaining. At this stage, he would be 27 points clear in the curve up, so a second safety car was deployed. Just about time for another five laps in the race. Rene Rast with his nose in front, Nico Muller in second, Jamie Green fighting off just about Sheldon van der Linde for third place and several other cars having made second pit stops including Robin Fryens to try and freshen up their tyres. Then three laps to go, Nico Muller makes his move out of the Parabolica into the hairpin slowing the car down from 295 to just 55 kilometres an hour and he got the lead of the race away from Rene Rast.